Florida Atlantic University is a 30,000 student public institution in South Florida that has redesigned its education leadership programs in partnership with local school districts. New standards for leadership were coming out that were replacing the old national standards. And there was a movement towards really looking at the role of the principal in schools. That role has changed significantly in the last 15 years. And one of the things that we've seen is the move towards instructional leadership. We've had a very successful um, partnership program with the Broward Schools. It's become a model. Um, and many of the good components of that program is what we have now implemented in the partnership programs now going on into Palm Beach and St. Lucie and now Martin counties. We decided that we really wanted to go back to the basics and take a look at all aspects of our program. So we brought together the districts and our faculty and we took a look at what were the current national standards, what were the current state standards, and we actually asked the districts to come up with their own leadership standards. So what was the name of that pamphlet that Thomas Paine wrote? The pamphlet he wrote was Common Sense. What do we need to do to make sure we're truly looking at preparing leaders for a future that we cannot predict? Uh, how do we prepare them to be adaptable and flexible? How do we prepare them so that they make ethical decision-making the core of everything they do? And how do we prepare them so that they are absolutely, thoroughly willing to explore diversity? So we are actually addressing the needs of every student, uh, wherever they are whatever their condition, whatever their family's condition. And that did require that we really do a rethink of what we were offering. Uh, and it's required a redesign of the program. The university and its partners set goals, analyzed their work, and consulted the Ritchie Program for School Leaders at the University of Denver, their mentor program. Right now, the universities have been preparing and, and developing assistant principals with what we call the level one certification. And then districts, to be specific, actually create programs where they further develop these leaders to be ready for the assistant principalship. We've taken both of these things and combined them together. And based on that, we then started developing courses. We went off to Denver and they have the Ritchie program and we went and observed them in action. So we worked very closely with them to find the best elements within it that we could put into our own context to develop our programs. If we were to talk to students within the program, how would they be able to articulate this focus within the program? Hmm. Quality Measures is a self-study system where we look at the whole program process, beginning with admissions of students to the program and how we screen students and we ensure quality candidates. And that admissions process is actually designed by the leadership directors of each of the, the districts involved, plus FAU faculty, who then determine how we're going to screen, well, nominate candidates. We incorporated a much more robust and rigorous screening process to make sure that we really were picking up quality candidates who had already demonstrated leadership qualities uh, and skills and behaviors and values in their schools, and so that when they were nominated by their principals for the program, we could come up with a real cohort of very, very strong candidates. There was some resistance by faculty who said, this is working quite well, why should we change? That resistance, I think, was overcome when they realized that this is no longer about my course. This is about our program and communicating together with districts about their needs and how we need to move from what is clearly just the theoretical to putting this into practice. There's a very strong relationship between the instructor, the principal it at the school, and the candidate, the student. This is one of the deliberate things that we've put into place here where the principal actually trained in coaching. Mentor coaching principals provide guidance and support as aspiring leaders analyze their schools and complete projects. 
I had to agree to be his mentor before he even applied to the program. So it was laid out very clearly at the very beginning. You know, the idea is if you nominate somebody, they could be accepted. And if they are accepted, you are agreeing to multi-year uh, mentorship training uh, requirements as well. The second half of the ALP course last night touched upon exactly what we want to do within our PLC, which was uh, try to move from the stand and deliver and move into the uh, small group instruction. Right. Having a mentor that has been in the field and knowing that that's the same path I'm trying to take really shows me that, hey, look, this path is accessible and that more and more over time, the more and more I'm learning from her is, is what is going to create my path and allow me to get to the point to where eventually I want to be. Everybody have their poster? When Brandon came to me, he said, I know we need to be collaborating more with the language arts teachers. And I believe Everybody. that that would have a powerful influence on how well our students do both in language arts and in civics. And so we started that conversation there. I started by asking him, okay, what's your end goal? What do you want to see by the end of the year? And how are you going to get people on board to do this? Some results are not favorable. And so what this would do for us is to give them a strategy to try to help those students Good. that they need to bring in and target. Okay, so are you guys reviewing your data differently this year than you did last year? Absolutely. Okay, tell me how, well, what's different? Uh, the urgency, number one. Okay. And just hearing some of her ideas when I start to voice my opinions and my strategies and things that I'm learning, to hear how her ideas and how she aligned directly with what we're learning within the program and what we want to accomplish as a professional learning community and eventually as a school encouraged me to realize that we're all on the same page and that as I continue to grow within this program, she's going to be there to support me and, and help me and lead me. Three districts are developing a leader tracking system. These are online databases with information about the education, career progress, and performance of aspiring, novice, and veteran principals. Leader tracking systems offer information on potential candidates for the principalship and provide feedback to the universities on their preparation programs. It's our hope that the leader tracking systems are actually going to focus more on what are the qualities that we're looking for and create a much more objective decision-making process in terms of selecting people to fill the assistant principalship and principalship positions within the district. If we are seeing, in, uh, as we try to place candidates, that there's a gap uh, in knowledge or skills in being able to properly place someone, then we can kind of build it into our leadership pipeline to make sure that we fill those gaps. The district and university aren't the only key actors in the redesign of principal preparation. The state plays a critical role, too. One of the things that the state did right away was it updated its program approval standards for university programs and required things like partnership uh, between districts and universities. It's important that a state has a role in developing leaders and how we go about this work. We need their input on what uh, the, the requirements are for a leader. Also, we like their financial support, too, because one of the things that we see that we could benefit from is really having an a, a internship or, or residency where people actually go into schools and they have time to actually practice what they've learned in a school that's not their own, uh, and that takes money. The program develops leaders who know how to work collaboratively to improve education. The difference between just looking at leaders and looking at a leadership team is the difference between this idea of the heroic Superman who goes in front of the school and changes everything uh, to a leader who pulls together multiple people within the school to create a leadership team that really understands the vision and puts it into practice.